well. Happy Friday. Sorry, I'm a few minutes late to this live. Long story short, the last time I went live, the YouTube account that was connected to my streaming software was my gaming channel, which is kind of like a secondary account for fun. Uh, and I had to go all the way into like account settings and remerge this account. <laughs> so, fun stuff. Alright, but now that we should be live, I'm just going to confirm. Let's see if I go... Yeah, YouTube has shown that we're, we're live. Good, good stuff, good stuff. And... Hi Poppy, Ricky, it's been so long since you've seen my face. Yes, it's only been like an hour. <laughs> So, as the title suggests, I have a new camera. I'm pretty hyped. I'm pretty excited to unbox it. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite a leap for me, a jump, because I've been using Canon cameras, and this is not a Canon camera. Yeah. So, it's, I don't know if anyone else who's like a, photographer jumped ship from like one camera manufacturer brand to another but it's a process you know it's it's not like I mean it could be an overnight thing if you have the money and want to uh <laughs> just do it like that but I kind of want to ease into it so my intent with it is to I, I pretty much want to um start off like with a more vlog a more like minimal camera and I kind of like that anyway for the sake of accessibility um, but I am going the Sony route <laughs> it's been recommended to me by some other creators uh, that I'm friends with and um, specifically I know I Justine has told me to go Sony like probably for the last I want to say it was like she started suggesting it a year and a half ago. So I finally found like the camera that's going to like do it for me. So I'm pretty excited to like unbox that and show it. Uh, I also like, I don't know if anyone else does this, but when I kind of get my sights set on a uh, sights, haha, <laughs> blind joke, um, pun. But when I get my sights set on a new toy, new piece of tech, whatever it might be. Like, I've probably watched over 40 videos on this camera alone. Like, what what are the best settings? Uh, what, you know, so many different reviews, different takes on it from like professional videographers to people who are just trying to casually create content and are looking for something that is approachable and, and easy to use. It just doesn't become a barrier between you and the storytelling. So that's what, um, that's what I was really kind of looking for. Uh, and then I'm also cross streaming this to Twitch. So for the folks over at Twitch, hello, this is also on YouTube, but I appreciate the kind words. Uh, looks like Fred, Fredward. Thank you. Uh, also, if you're wondering why I'm wearing glasses, I don't know if anyone's made a comment yet about it. These are not for magnification. These are not to do any kind of vision correction. And I'll probably have to clarify this again. Uh, these are simply for blue light. These are to just kill off blue light coming from screens because um, especially during this past year when you are working primarily from home and so much screen time, I've just noticed my migraines, which I normally just, it's a, it's a frequent thing. It's a normal thing for me to maybe get like a mi minor migraine during the day from just vision fatigue and all that. Um, and soreness but it was pretty rampant it was uh it was quite it was drastic uh, a lot of times I wanted to go edit and I just I couldn't you know just the screen time I'd spent during the day doing emails or video conferencing or working on a prior project or even just making a thumbnail it hurt my eyes so much so I got these not long ago probably 
a couple weeks back and they've been so helpful. It's, it's helped me prolong my work sessions, uh, my screen time sessions, so yeah. Blue light glasses, if you have any remaining vision or sight or anything, or you, you know, you're sighted, um, totally recommend it. You can also get them in your prescription glasses as well, if you have those. So oh, it's, it's so good. I don't know, there might be an eye condition out there where like blue light glasses are not a benefit. I don't know, I don't know about that, but, but there is, yeah. Either way, <laughs> thanks everyone who's in the chat, by the way, like, I, hello, I, you know, I don't do a lot of these live streams um, on YouTube, so I'm just like where I'm just literally chatting, having coffee, about to unbox something, but I'm gonna answer questions, you know, they come in quite a bit, but I also wanna talk about the YouTube channel, like the primary channel, because um, I'm really excited where we are kind of in the world right now um, with everything that's, you know, we've gone through in this last year. Uh, Cause I'm going to, I'm going to talk about some, not like, not drastic changes to the channel, but maybe some content to expect to see moving forward. Uh, Cause it might be a little different. Uh, there may be a little less focus on tech. I mean, tech will definitely play in with my videos. I'll talk about that though. Um, in a bit. So, but if anyone's got any questions, like off the bat, happy to um, <laughs> have it uh, answer. But Ricky's like, let me let me have my computer read this. Sorry. So my I have my AirPods in, and my computer reads the messages as I put my mouse over it. <laughs> I think Ricky owns like two cameras, maybe more, but like both cameras are ones that I own too. So anytime Ricky has had a problem with her camera, it's it's been a call the blind camera guy. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, but how am I doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you for asking. I appreciate that. Uh, I can, hold on. I want to pop the chat. So I, I have scenes, right, for live streams. Like I have all the widgets, you know, you sub, you, you, you know, you do all those things, you, whatever it might be. Um, I just wanted to strip that all back today. I just wanted to kind of keep it like clean and, but I'm cool with adding the chat. I feel like the chat uh, makes sense, right? To add a, a chat widget here. Give me one second. Let me, let me add that. Um, but I'm doing well. Thank you. Uh, today was interesting. I actually uh, I had orientation mobility training today. I had a, a O&M lesson is what we call it. So that was pretty exciting. I talked in my recent video where I was answering questions about travel and you know, my experiences with that. Um, I talked a lot about where I fall short of travel and like my fears and stuff. And a lot of it had to do with um, buses, you know, just being unfamiliar with buses and, and you know, how that works and everything and, and understanding from bus routes and, and, and all that. Uh, I rode a bus today. I rode a bus. I even did a transfer to a, you know, to, to a place. So that was cool. Um, I did it with an O and M instructor, of course, but, and I, and I've done buses before, but typically not, not solo, um, which I haven't done it solo yet. So, but buses confuse me. So I'm trying to learn. I'm pretty comfortable with trains and, and all that, but yeah. Uh, what made me become a YouTuber? Ooh. <laughs> I like, I feel like this question is, uh, it, it's, it's a tough one to answer because simply I loved the camera. I loved, um, storytelling when I was like eight years old is when I like kind of found a passion for, for turning on the camera and hitting record and, and letting my imagination go wild with my friends. Um, you know, creating little like superhero movies and stuff in, in the, uh, the VHS little tapes. And, and uh, then, you know, so I, I was eight at the time. YouTube was kind of just rolling out, if not like being conceived. I don't know if that's the right word. Being, you know, YouTube was coming uh, out to the public. And prior before like Google even bought YouTube back, you know, before then. Uh, but for me, I was about nine years old when my uncle 
That's my uncle. Pretty much made an account for me. Like, you know, YouTube don't don't <laughs> don't punish my channel just because I was nine and on the platform at the time. It was two thousand six. It was ten maybe. I don't know. Nine or ten. But uh, yeah, late two thousand six is when I joined YouTube and I was like uploading videos. They were really bad videos. It was just more of an outlet uh, for me to like post and, and like make little animations and just, you know, explore my creativity. And I, you know, throughout high school, posted things, short films, um, scripted things, tech videos. It was just a, a lot of experimentation. It's a lot of fun though. Uh, I love YouTube though. I've had my account since 2006. If you go to my channel and under the about section, it will say joined October 19th. 2006 this channel is older than a lot of people even on youtube on this platform these days which is like it's weird to think about so that's how i became a youtuber but in terms of like pursuing it um again just continuously had an interest in filmmaking and uh with that it, it as i opened up more about the visual impairment and and, and those experiences um I think more people, you know, found the videos and, and uh, so even the, you know, I don't make any living from doing YouTube, but YouTube plays a role in letting me get other work. So I put something out and a company or someone who wants to hire me to like speak or consult or um, even work on like film related content uh, or video or something for them. That's how like I make income. Uh, but YouTube is just kind of this nice driving uh, force behind it. You know, it's really just a place for me to kind of market what I do, my skills and, and, and what I love to talk about, but also just like the creative freedom behind it. So it's pretty cool. Uh, folks over at, uh, Twitch. Hello folks on YouTube. Hello. We're just doing, you're just chatting today. We're not doing any kind of gaming. Um, and typically I won't post like, gaming streams on on my main youtube channel that's for youtube.com forward slash games wrath you like that <laughs> it's pretty i like that i can do that games wrath and then um there's also twitch.tv forward slash james wrath so those are those are where i do gaming i haven't been as active with the gaming thing lately uh it's i'm going to be i've been wanting to so it, it's just a matter of, uh, I've been working on a lot of cool things behind the scenes though. that I really, I cannot talk about yet cause they are, um, nothing's finalized and it's not like public info yet, but some really exciting projects that I'm like, when I can talk about it, I can't wait. I, I like, I'm so excited to share it and like have like my community involved in some way or another, but it, it's some pretty exciting things, but it's, it's really the next major thing I want to do in my career. Um, but until then, you know, until it's like ready to talk about, um, hold back on that right now, but I have been busy. I haven't just like not been doing content or not been, uh, you know, doing stuff. Uh, let me get caught up on the chat here. Computer again is reading it. Hi, Ace Rocks. Um, Yeah, so um, I don't use a PC personally right now. I have PC on my Mac in terms of like, I I do run Windows on my Mac when I need to. And I did have a Windows computer, but I gave it to my best friend. Um, it was a pretty decent Dell laptop, uh, pretty modern. He was working off of like a 2000, 2009 laptop and best friend since. And, and so when I came back to the East Coast and I, realized he's sitting there trying to render animation and, and um, video editing on a really like old machine, like a decade old machine. I like, dude, I have this Windows laptop. I use it for like sometimes consulting with like more apps or if I need to test something, but please just just take it. it it's, you, you could make more use. It's just collecting dust. So uh, I don't have a PC right now, um, but I would recommend if he's totally blind, obviously a screen reader. Uh, narrator is built in. I don't, know the quality of narrator though i don't hear many people use it uh on the mac side voiceover is um fairly well respected i think there are some open source screen readers out there as well that can run on mac 
so there, you know, there's that. And maybe it's, it's, I don't know what kind of software he's running or what kind of tasks he's trying to do, but sometimes an iPad is all someone needs and it's got a great screen reader built in voiceover again. It's a little bit more of a simpler uh, user interface and uh, it can do many things that a computer can do. Other than that, I would say like, you can also like use a keyboard to navigate voiceover on the iPad. A lot of people don't know that, but yeah, if you uh, have a keyboard, you can do a lot of the same keyboard gestures and shortcuts and, and navigation that you would on your Mac. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, but yeah, I would maybe look into again, look, look at what he's needing to do and maybe an iPad or uh, maybe Mac is the route to go, but maybe, you know, PC. Um, I, unfortunately, I can't make the best suggestions with PC, but Zoom Text is something I used to use on a PC. Well, who knows? Maybe Windows 11, which is coming out uh, end of the year, will have some nice accessibility improvements. I haven't looked too much into it. But also, hello everyone who's um, joining. How are we doing? How is everyone doing today? I'm doing fairly good. I was kind of talking about how I was doing orientation mobility earlier this morning. It's taking buses. Um, trying to get used to that. So that was a lot of fun. And I just finished recording a podcast. I'm excited. I, I'll share it over like on Twitter. Um, if it goes on YouTube, I'll probably share it in the YouTube community tab. But that is with uh, fellow YouTubers, Ricky Pointer and a uh, Annie Eleni, um, who talks a lot about like, ableism and, and, and activism and, and accessibility, as well as like chronic illness and stuff like that. So really cool discussions and conversations we had in a podcast, uh, but I'll share that once it's, once it's live. Oh, Riley. Yeah. Welcome. I know. So I wasn't even, um, intending to live stream this to Twitch, but my software kind of required it unless I wanted to go through the effort and I didn't want to delay the stream anymore. So I already had to reconnect my primary YouTube account and not my games wrath account for, for gaming. Um, yeah, it made me, it, it forced me to cross stream, uh, which I don't know, might be an issue with my affiliate status on Twitch, but I'm not too worried about monetizing Twitch. Twitch is just fun for me. It's just a fun hangout. Um, speaking of Twitch, I, I overheard a question come in about Twitch. Uh, I think that was, uh, sorry, let me, Mana. Hi, Mana. Nice to meet you too. How do I manage what people say in the chat? Um, so my computer is reading it to me, to my AirPods. Um, sometimes I have it set to automatic where each time a chat is coming in, uh, it, it will read it to me right away. But you know, it's a little harder to focus, I think, when I do that at times, especially if like I, would, I got a train of thoughts going and I'm trying to answer one thing. So what I can do is hover my mouse over uh, multiple questions and, and or chats and the Mac can just read it. It's called, um, it was called Zoom Speak. It's in the accessibility settings of the Mac, but I think now it is, if in Mac OS Big Sur and later, it's gonna be under spoken content in accessibility. And then it's a check mark uh, and it's called speak items under the pointer. So that is the feature I'm using to do that right now. I can also just highlight a message by the way, like so I can just double click it, highlights the, the entire message and then hit a key command. Um, by default, I think it's like command escape. That's a little complicated for me, like in terms of feels a little, it's like you gotta stretch your hand up quite a bit. So I just do control A, it's a custom key I set. Uh, but I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you um, for those who are asking how I'm doing. Uh, looks like we got a question coming in here from Martin. Hello, Martin. Oh, yeah, so why is my, good question, why is C different show? My, my So my podcast, I'm doing it on the side, which we have a new episode coming out next week, by the way, with um, uh, Juan Alcazar. I think that episode is gonna be the next one. I'm excited. Uh, it's gonna kinda go alongside, I'm, I will be uploading a new tech-related video uh, real soon here, but it, it kinda goes alongside that. Um, so why is C different show set to explicit? So I did that as sort of more per precautionary, uh, measure 
because I want my guests to be able to feel like they can, whether it's a vent or have a space where they can like be pretty raw. Um, I don't intend to be like swearing off. That's not like me. It's not like me to, to do that in, in content and all that. Um, but you know, if we do go to a, pre, you know, pretty serious space or, or topic or conversation, I guess I, I check that as a, Hey, um, just know this is like the space for James or his guests to kind of feel like if they needed to kind of just get it off their chest, um, and feel raw, they can. Um, I honestly think the worst word I've had on the show thus far, which we were only like three episodes that are released right now. Um, maybe it was H E double hockey stick. <laughs> uh, hell. Um, but you know, and there were parts of podcasts that I cut out that like were maybe like off topic or, or just more casual conversation that was like before or after, or maybe, you know, something was said or not, not like in a bad way. It was just more so, uh, in reference to something like a reactionary, like, you know, what the, you know, whatever. So, but yeah, typically my content yeah, is meant to be approachable. It's meant to be pretty brand family friendly, more so in the sense that like, I want, I want kids like who are my age when I needed representation to be able to watch this content, uh, and feel, feel like they have someone that they, you know, is living the life that, you know, they can very much live or I don't even know that's the right wording, but I just know when I was like 11, 12, 13, 14 on YouTube, there was nobody else who was visually impaired or blind, uh, doing it. You know, there may have been a few individual videos here and there of like a visually impaired person, but no one was talking about this stuff. And so, yeah, I just want people to feel like the content's approachable and accessible, I guess, in a way. So hope that answers that question. It's, it's for precautionary and, and just kind of note that maybe on the C different show, you know, a guess could, I would, I wouldn't like tell them, no, you can't say this word. Um, obviously if it's like a, you know, derogatory or if it's a discriminatory, that's, that's one thing, but if it's just like a square for emphasis, go for it and expect it maybe. So cool. Uh, yeah, Twitch has something. I honestly, I may turn off. Like, I want people to be able to use emotes and stuff on Twitch. Like, right? Um, but I'm not worried about making money from Twitch. Uh, it's the least of my worries. It's just it was meant to be a place where you know we can do some community building, some some um, some gaming, and it's meant to continue to be that. I'm gonna try and do some more of that real soon. Uh, in fact, if you haven't seen like a stream of mine since Twitch, like this space is new. Like what I'm doing, like I have a new setup specifically for gaming and podcasting and streaming, which is the space here. My main editing place um, used to be connected to it, like on a L shaped desk and it was distracting. It was, uh, it was too much for me. So I, I needed to separate it. And so I, I over where I edit and my do my daily computer browsing and all that uh, and we're writing and all that that's all done at a desk that is actually a standing desk now. Uh, and I may make a video about that. I, I kind of wanted to, but I got a standing desk because I have uh, some cr chronic pain, um, sciatica from an athletic injury back in high school. And I don't talk too much about it, but it's like, it just makes it hard to sit or stand for long periods of time. And it's helped so much with my productivity having the standing desk. So I may talk about that though, in terms of like, Make a video about um, my setup, my productivity, all that. Managing work from home with ADHD and chronic pain as well as a visual impairment. I just got it stacked on stack on stack. <laughs> um, but yeah, so expect some more Twitch content uh, streams. I would love to do it weekly. It might be a bi-weekly thing moving forward, but yeah, that's gonna continue when I get back from a trip so I'm actually traveling. Um, Ricky Pointer and I are gonna do some content together. Uh, so YouTube collab, we'll probably do maybe a TikTok. I'm on TikTok by the way, so if you don't follow me there, if you're not into TikTok, that, if you're not into TikTok, that's that's fine. But 
just know I start posting to TikTok. And there's 6,000 followers, 7,000, I think, as of this morning, followers. People, it's a new audience. It's an interesting place. Um, some stranger comments than I've ever seen before, but like also some real supportive ones. So it's not, it's not all that bad. But TikTok can be a little intimidating, I'm not gonna lie. And for anyone just joining, these glasses are not for magnification, it's for killing off blue light, just to kind of help prolong any eye strain that may may occur. Uh, cool, cool, cool. But I'm doing well, thank you for, again, anyone asking. Uh, Dad's completely blind, tried to have him use an iPhone, but okay, and couldn't. Revisit the iPad. Yeah, I would say maybe the iPad might be a good place to start, and there's like several tiers of the iPad. And I, honestly, I find the iPad very accessible with affordability. For everything it has to offer, the bare iPad's like 329. 309, I think, for students. So it's really not a bad, um, it's not a bad value at all. Uh, who is my favorite YouTuber? Oh man, let's see. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. My, the content I watch kind of varies. It changes. Um, I watch, so I can list off some people who I'm like currently watching. Um, there is Harris Heller. He does a lot of live streaming. Um, he does a lot of talking about entrepreneurship. I think he's brilliant. He's a great, great creator. Uh, I Justine, she's just brilliant. She's fun. Um, tech personality who just like or lifestyle as well um you know her vlogs are great uh who else i watch i do watch mkbhd um and i thought about making a video about this but i i, I have some I have a few critiques on some of his takes when it comes to thinking about universal design and accessibility he said a few comments now uh more times that like it's in the back of my head and like I've noticed, but he's made some comments both in videos and Twitter and stuff, um, kind of knocking accessibility, whether or not he is intentionally doing so, but he definitely ignores accessibility quite often. Um, I'm not going to sit here and like, I don't want to criticize. I think Marquez Brownlee is brilliant. I think he's great. I love his content, love, um, how he's just able to talk on camera for like 15 minutes or longer with no music. And it just keeps it engaged. The subtle video effects he does to like pan in, pan out, B-roll. Um, I just have a few like, I wouldn't mind having a conversation with him and like picking his brain about maybe why he thinks, you know, or disregard some things that he's mentioned in the past about accessibility. That's all. Cause I think accessibility is uh, innovative. I think it's the best way to design your products and services. And um, it has been proven um, leads to just more mainstream innovations. I mean, look at live text on iOS 15. Uh, I know Google Lens has sort of done something similar to that, but this like system level OCR, that's like software that blind people have been using for years to have things like documents read aloud to us and, and character recognition, you know? And so anyway, um, but Apple's live text, I, you know, a lot of their innovative features that come out, whether it's innovative or you just want to call it like popular features, it, it stems from, they already had a version of it or beta in a way in the accessibility settings. Trackpad on iPad, dark mode being invert colors, smart invert. So anyway, that's just, um, uh, but yeah, in terms of favorite creators, uh, there's also Johnny Harris and is his, um, his wife. They're both, uh, they make travel content and also explainers on history. And, and also I love history, by the way, I've been watching a doc, a, a ton of documentaries and Netflix has like audio described documentaries. So that's like been a lot of fun to dive into. Uh, Apple's got a couple documentaries, um, that I, I want to check out. I haven't actually, I just know they have great audio descriptions for, for us blind, low vision, uh, viewers. So documentaries I've really gotten into, but yeah, I say I love history with like excitement because in school I failed history class like three times. 
so many times. Like I failed history because I had teachers unwilling to accommodate, specifically like history teachers, um, who weren't the most accessible for me. And I couldn't, couldn't grasp it. I couldn't read it. I couldn't uh, engage with the material. And so I never really got to learn about history and, and like, so now that I have accessible documentaries, like documentaries that have like audio descriptions and I can watch it on like my MacBook Pro in my bed, like inches from my face, I can zoom in, I can pause it if I need to like examine like old footage or something from like World War One or two or something like oh, it's it's been it's been a breath of fresh air. Maybe I'll talk about that in a video. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to really make that interesting, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've become a little bit of like a history enthusiast, I guess, in terms of like, I want to learn about it. I don't know much about it, but like, I could probably recite at this point the timeline of World War II. <laughs> Like I, I pretty much, I know it down to like a beat on what was going on in, in, in on the Atlantic side and the Pacific side and you know, timeline of those events. It's I've become such a history nerd who just wants to learn more about history. Uh, but obviously in a way that's like accessible for me. Um, I got a camera to unbox. I know I, I kind of talked about that earlier, but let's, let's get to this. Um, thank you for the great questions though that are coming through. Uh, do I have a favorite documentary? Um, good question. It's, it's hard to say because I'm still just kind of diving into many. I watched World War II in color recently and World War I um, in color is something I'm like working through at the moment. Uh, I've watched, watched some nature documentaries on Curiosity Stream. There, there it's a whole nonfiction and documentary uh, platform. They got some cool stuff on there. They don't have audio description content though. It's closed captioned, but um, so that's that's an area of opportunity. Uh, I'm trying to think what I mean. World War II just it fascinated me so much. I think World War II in color might be like my favorite documentary, but it's, it's like recent in my head, so that might be why. But also on Netflix, the Last Dance um, with the NBA and everything like basketball came out during the uh, quarantine. That's a really good docu-series. Um, I know so many. <laughs> uh, so, all right. We've got, we've got a thing to unbox here. Uh, all right, right in here. So make sure, you know, I'm a little cautious with personal data, personal privacy stuff that may appear. Pretty sure I've already written out any tracking info or uh, addresses, things like that. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm excited. I'm excited. All right, so I'm just opening up this box now. I probably am unboxing this upside down. And we're about to do the camera reveal. <laughs> you ready? I want to say this is this is a camera, right? Oh my gosh, the box is small. So, the camera is the Sony ZV-1. Let the autofocus get it, hopefully. So this is a new, not new, came out in the last year, but it's new for me. Um, it's my first Sony camera. I've been using Canon and Blackmagic in the past. Uh, first camera that is Sony, but it's it's a point and shoot. It's like made for vloggers. It's got the the intent of like video creators who are going to appear on the video or make travel related content. We'll talk more about that in a moment. But yeah. So this is the Sony ZV4 one. I was gonna say it shoots into 4K. And it also does really wild slow motion up to like 940 frames per second and in like short bursts but that could be interesting for some like montage stuff for, for travel um let me let me just get what else is in here so one of the reasons i got this camera 
is for accessibility. Um, cameras are not very well known for being uh, accessible, I would say. You know, in terms of iPhones and Android phones are probably the most accessible cameras on the market in terms of <clears throat> people who have limited de dexterity, people who have visual impairments can use assistive technology built into the software, the viewfinder, to use them. I would love to see that in actual professional cameras. Uh, not to say you can't do a professional shoot with an iPhone. It's just more so like if you're looking for full control of a camera with a bigger sensor, it's just technically not going to be uh, made with accessibility in mind. This camera, I think, is probably one of the best examples. And I will do like a full-on review if people want. Um, not of like a technical review of like, I'm a photographer and this is... This is my review of how good the picture is looking. No, it would be a, how practical is this camera for what I intend to use it for, which is YouTube, content creation, uh, TikTok, things like that. So I'm happy to do a kind of review for that and a real world use case where I'm gonna take it with me on a trip next week, really put it through the paces. Um, but it's accessible because, and, and actually I'll get to the body of the camera in a moment. But there's also a kit you can get, and this is this is part of it. It's a, let's see if I can get that in focus. So it's a uh, grip that has controls built in. It's wireless too. So it has a big record button, a photo button. It has a zoom uh, toggle, like a rocker. So you can like zoom in and out. Uh, it has also a custom config button. So you can configure whatever extra action you want it to, which is really cool. So again, if you're looking for a camera with like accessibility in mind, this might be the area to start. And again, the reason why this is kind of important, it's like when the camera is on here and you're looking to just like record yourself, or you can even be like behind the camera and you're like shooting something else with the camera, having these important functions and controls right from the, uh, right there at, at your thumb, at your fingertip, I think is brilliant. I think it's super key to be able to do these these basic functions, stop, record, grab a photo, um, even you can, so <laughs> by default, I think the, the configuration button is set to focus and defocus. Uh, and that's actually like a full on feature with this camera. Uh, it is, it has the option where you can, with a press of a button, create more bokeh in your backdrop. You know, it adjusts the f-stop um, so that suddenly you can allow for for your viewers or your audience or, you know, for the actual video to show what's in the background. But, you know, like in the camera I have right now, for anyone who can visually make it out, there is blur. It, there's depth of field. There is depth to my background, to, to this... Um, backdrop here you can literally with a press of a button in real time without really affecting the exposure you can just toggle it on and off so if you want to be the focus in the video it's that simple if you want to showcase something that's behind you press of a button suddenly it unblurs the background uh it's pretty pretty wild so but it's you know it's for video so it's it's like a it's like a portrait mode that you can toggle on and off like an iphone but in video and it actually works really well because it's like it's a real focus it's a real bokeh it's not artificial it's just quickly making those settings on the fly while trying to keep yourself properly exposed like your face with facial detection and autofocus so um now this camera isn't perfect it's not the perfect camera in fact a lot of people a lot of reviews are saying it is a little bit uh it's not wide enough it's a it's so it's a 20 for those who like know about cameras and stuff it's a 20 millimeter, no, 24, might be a 24 millimeter. Might have to double check. I think it's a, I think it's a 24 millimeter to 70 millimeter. I can get a little bit of zoom in there. Um, it's wide, but not like wide, not like vlog desire to be wide, but I bought something else to help with that. So, uh, this is the other part of the package. Um, but before I get into this, let me get caught up on chat. Uh, <laughs> So I'm gonna have my, gonna have my uh, computer read this to me. 
Uh, well, I'm learning. unboxing this. It's cute and small. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Sorry, it's like reading everything to me right now. Give me one second. Sure. Okay. Sorry, I'm like, I have it reading everything. Um, so it sounds like a lot of people want to know about like photography, like tips and skills and like, yeah, I could probably, I mean, I could, I've done videos in the past kind of reviewing the camera of an iPhone, um, and talking about some practices I do and like why it's accessible, but I could just do a full on like, would you want to see a video from me on how to do like, just, just like my photography tips? Like I'm not... I don't proclaim to be like a photographer. I can do photography. Like I, I, I've taken photos with like, you know, people modeling and photos for people and friends and stuff. And primarily I've always done it on like a smartphone. Like my friend, Andrea LaSalle, she's a YouTuber. She's a Instagram, uh, influencer and, and disabled activist. Um, she gets compliments on her photos all the time. The ones that I took of her. I'm like, oh my gosh, who took this photo? And it's really funny when she's like, oh, my blind friend took it for me. And then it's even funnier when it's like, and it was shot on an iPhone 10 or it was shot on an iPhone 11 um, because the photos look incredible. Like, like, it doesn't look like it was shot on an iPhone, but I, I'm, I'm pretty decent at making a photo that is shot on an iPhone uh, not look like it was shot on a phone. So I can certainly do a video about that. Um, I'd be happy to, and, and, you know, I can also kind of go back into like a point and shoot. Uh, I have a Canon G7X, which technically this is sort of replacing. Um, but I don't even touch that camera anymore just cause it's, uh, it's a little outdated. It's a little lacking in functionality. Anyway, um, this is pretty much just extra batteries. So nothing too exciting there. It's like three extra batteries. So now I got four batteries for this thing. This is the thing though. I'm pretty excited about. Uh, it's the WL1, I believe it's called, and it, it's basically just a ring you can put onto this camera to make it more wide angle. So kind of bringing it down to like a 20 or, or 18 millimeter, um, just widen, widen the picture, get more in, in your, uh, in your shot. And then you can even take off half of the lens of the attachment and make it a macro, which is really cool. So you can get some nice like up close shots of maybe like food or signs or just textures in general. Um, which just for me, someone who has less than 10% of sight, that stuff, th those textures are completely out of like my, my viewable range, even up close, right? Like that's an up close is where I can like see the most detail, which is still very impaired. Um, so I'm really excited to like be able to do the macro zoom in with the macro lens and, um, see things like I've never seen before, you know, when I you know, go out and do like some photography or videography or whatever, like that, that's one of the things that always kinds of excites me about camera shooting is just like, at the end of the day, the camera is just, it's just a glorified magnifying glass and it's an accessible tool. You know, it's just a big old, it's a big old zoom lens. Yeah. So, um, yeah, let's, I'm going to unbox this, but, um, caught up a little bit love a video about uh getting really good at photos on iphone yeah we'll do it then yeah well um i'll do a video about how i do my photography um good to know people want to see that you know and i'll try to make it like because i don't want to be a tutorial channel like, that's not what i do but I'll, I'll talk about my process and i'll you know give those tips and stuff and just talk about like hey i'm a legally blind photographer uh, part-time some of the time i'm also a videographer mainly film director uh and you know but how i take reference photos or my thumbnails or anything like that or yeah Could definitely do that uh i'm gonna open up the camera first i was about to sit here and like open up the lens attachment first i'm like that's not that's not the fun part all right so unboxing it uh instructions will be on top uh, never going to even attempt to read that. Uh, all right. So another big thing with this camera is the microphone. 
they opted to not put a because again this is this is a camera that's like geared towards vloggers um and and entry kind of videographers or content creators on online for online video they opted to not put a flash like a lot of point shoots do like a flash for for photography instead it has a really nice microphone like probably from what i've heard and from what other reviewers have said some reviewers are like eh, the mic's not that great but it's like comparing it to onboard microphones of cameras of like any other camera it is probably one of the best microphones on a camera like built into a camera that's ever been done at least in a consumer grade camera so i'm excited to test that out try it i will probably still opt to like put a little whether it's like a road video mic or some other kind of like these batteries are tiny look at this tiny little battery it's real small real small there um let's shut off the battery it's not the exciting part uh, it is micro usb unfortunately not that usb c which i love i love usb c one it's more powerful it's also just, it's a little bit more accessible in terms of like ergonomically let's put it in either way uh, but yeah, this microphone, apparently it's really good. Uh, it comes with a, what they call a dead cat. Uh, you can also just call it a wind muffle, muffler, but a lot of people call it a dead cat. Um, I'm not going to reference dead kittens. Feels... That's not, <laughs> we're not about that. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Oh uh, man, I'm like, I'm so excited to finally have it in my hand. It's real small, real light. Oh my gosh, this is great. Again, accessibility is also like how well can you like how functional is it in its in its compact size and it's like this thing is very functional in its compact size. Probably gonna need that battery to even like start this guy up. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do a full on like setting up the camera right now because what I kind of need to do is open up something like either be my eyes and call someone and be like, Hey, can you walk me through these menus? I'm, you know, trying to, trying to read some menus here. Uh, gonna need someone to volunteer that. Uh, but then the other, or I can also just use seeing AI Microsoft's app to try and like, just have it OCR, read it. Uh, trying to figure out though, how do I open up the others? Okay. So Canon hold it, the lock is a little bit different. The Sony versus the Canon. Um, gosh, I'm excited. This is cool. It's, it's, it's always fun when you have a new toy, right? Uh, all right. So I also want to talk about one of the reasons why I got this camera, though. And in part, it has to do with some of the content I'm planning to make moving forward. Before I kind of jump into that, though, I'm also just going to check the chat. Uh, Sony ZV-1. Yeah, that's the uh, camera. Love a video about how... Yeah. Okay, I'm trying to get caught up on everything. Where? Oh, and the vlogger kit is separate. Yes, yeah, so the vlogger kit is separate. It's like $150 more if you would like that. And I'll, I'll unbox the, um, the rod here in a second. Um, but again, in terms of accessibility benefits... Also, here's like a close-up of the camera. Okay, it's like... Let's try and get that. Autofocus, by the way, is a big accessibility feature for me, especially when I'm like self-shooting content, because obviously I can't really, I have to trust the camera, right? This camera has incredible autofocus. It's, it's extremely fast. It does eye tracking. If it can't see your eye, it'll move to the face tracking. If it can't see your face, it'll move on to item tracking. And this has a feature called product showcase. And there's some great videos and I'll talk about it too in like a video when I make a video about this camera the zv1 product showcase will immediately recognize that hey you're trying to put a product up even if a face so like my camera right now right if it sees the camera even though it's closer but if it sees my face it may want to go to my face it doesn't look like it's doing it right now if i zoom in but a lot of cameras try to prioritize the face by turning on the product showcase, you can quickly, really fast, it's like literally instant, put something up to the camera, your face could still be in the background, and it will, like, immediately, there's the um, wind muffler. 
to see how long this is taking i'm like trying to get this in focus the wind muffler maybe if i cover my face with it bring it back a little bit like this camera is not supposed to have this problem at all it's like canon your autofocus is great when it works there we go look at that wow that detail okay also i'm like i don't know if you can see into the glasses i'm wearing but it's like really zoomed in on my preview and that's how i'm able to make out <laughs> what's going on um but yeah anyway this this supposedly has a way to quickly attach uh, i don't know if i need to remove anything maybe i need to remove this yep okay so if i remove this it reveals the shoehorn mount i think it's called that might be butchering it but and then you can just slide that in and there you got a wind muffler right over the microphone so you can just record with the camera out the window of a car and it should so apologies for any loud noises there is a city i live in a city so it's like cars like to be loud um yeah so that's cool you can plug in a microphone too which is great so even if you don't want to use the onboard mic that is probably again one of the best onboard microphones in any camera Again, apologies for the cars that like to go by and have real loud engines. Never, never could see the appeal in a car with a loud engine. <laughs> but, it's sort of a blind joke. Yeah, so that's the camera. Um, again, I'm not going to set it up at the moment, but I'm going to unbox this because I want to show you what it looks like with the vlogger kit. But, um, well, how do I feel about Fujifilm cameras? I've never used them, so I don't know. Maybe they're cool, maybe they're better, but I've never used Fujifilm cameras. Have you used them? If so, let me know. I've, um, I primarily used Canon, uh, just diving into Sony. I've used some Sony cinema cameras, but not like me using them. I had a cinematographer for projects where I was directing and we were using like Sony FS7s and stuff. Real expensive cinema cameras that I, I don't want to use that for YouTube. That workflow. That's like a Marquez Brownlee kind of thing to do. And to each their own. <laughs> Comes with a 64 gigabyte SD card, by the way, the vlogger kit. Um, yeah, that's fine. That's cool, I guess. I have plenty of SD cards, but I'll take it. Doesn't hurt to have an extra, right? As long as it's fast. I don't know if it is a fast one, though. I'll have to check. You would hope. Sometimes these companies cheapen out, though. All right, instructions, don't need that. Looks like you got a little bit of a pouch. Okay, and a little, I think like a, those batteries, like a watch battery or something like an AirTag would have. Makes sense. All right, cool, how does this feel? Feels good, feels sturdy. So it can become a little tripod, which is nice, and you can, oh yeah, all right, this is good. And then the buttons here. And so the record button's textured. They're all like textured differently. So that's good. Let me let me show you what that looks like. Make sure it's getting in focus there. Oh man, I won't have this problem once I switch cameras. <laughs> uh, so there's a movie button, a photo button, and then a configuration button. And I think that's the lock. And then in the center, it's like a zoom rocker. So you can zoom in and out quickly. And this is all remote, so it's all wireless. and Quickly, these functions can become, or a custom function can all become accessible right there without having to you know, find it on the camera body. You know, so it just it feels more natural and fluid. And technically, you could just use this simply as a remote if you set the camera down somewhere, which is kind of cool. And as long as it can reach Bluetooth or something, um, you could walk out of frame. So if you want to set up all those vlogger shots like a uh, nice stat style, you could do that. Let's see how this uh, looks and feels once I get it on. Uh, but yeah, so one of the big reasons to get this camera, besides like friends telling me to switch to Sony <laughs> and trying to convince me for a while, uh, it in part had to do with the content I want to start doing. So about a year ago, year and a half ago, year and a half ago it's been a little bit i made a documentary 
little, little mini doc called um, Blind Abroad Istanbul. Traveled to Turkey. Cool stuff. Had a lot of fun. It was right before lockdown, you know, right before the world kind of. And the world's still going through a lot. Um, and, and, you know, so it's one of those things I'm like always paying attention to, I'm trying to be cautious about where I want to go. But I love traveling. Traveling's been a big thing, and I want to invest more in that and those kinds of content. Um, that kind of content and, and those experiences. There we go. I got screwed on. Um, so this is this is gonna be the new the new rig, the new <laughs> new setup, and then I'll, I'll put up the attachment lens on it as well to make it wider. But oh oh, it turned on. <laughs> there it is. So it automatically turns on when you flip out the screen. But interesting. Um, all right. I'm going to do that, though, with a Be My Eyes guide or something tonight or someone who I know. Uh, I, I don't know how to turn on and off. I think that's the power button. I saw a green light go on and off. But, yeah, I, I'm intending to do a little bit more travel content. And this camera, I just needed something that is as accessible as possible to pick up. It's not drawing so much attention because I currently have a Canon M50, which is great for YouTube. It's a, it's easy to recommend. It, it might, it, it's better than this camera in some ways that you can like change out the lenses. You can have a little bit more room for bigger, uh, microphones if you wanted to attach it, but I needed something that was discreet, something that could shoot 4k, something that was incredible, great slow motion for like higher frame rates. Um, but at the end of the day, something that was more accessible and this remote, I mean, attachment, just being a, kind of a part of the package, it kind of seals the deal for me. And the autofocus, uh, that functionality, I think helps a whole lot. So that's what ended up making me want to switch to this. Uh, and this might be one of many Sony cameras I'll get. I might hate this thing. I don't know yet. <laughs> like. It sounds amazing on paper. On other videos I've seen, it's like everything I've been wanting in a vlog camera, at least like beyond obviously software accessibility for like reading menus and better zooming into menus, you know, that kind of, the simple things that you could just port from Android <laughs> into your cameras. But anyway, um, I digress. <laughs> I'm looking to do more travel related content and that's kind of starting up again next week where I'm taking a trip and going to make like a video, not only about this camera, but about like the travel going and exploring a new city with a visual impairment and what I'm looking out for and, um, talking about like my experiences doing orientation mobility again. So like all that kinds of kinds of content. So yeah, that's, um, Hello for anyone just joining us. We were unboxing my new camera. Um, do you work with any Samsung cameras? Uh, I know Samsung does point and shoots and they've run Android on some cameras, but for the most part, no. Uh, I don't know how important their camera business is. And that's another thing is just kind of support, right? Like if they're just releasing a one-time product, it's cool, it might be an accessible product, but is it gonna have long-term you know, longevity with, with support and new releases and all that. I've had issues with Samsung where, for instance, I bought in like their smartphones in the past gets one update and that one update's delayed. Um, maybe two updates if they're generous. I know it's gotten better, but that was a big problem I had with my first galaxy phone, my galaxy eight, eight plus. It's just, it wasn't well supported. My, my first one was plagued with bugs. The, the first gen galaxy that like one of the weirdest bugs was it was literally sending at random times. It would just be sending photos from my photo library, uh, to random contacts that I haven't talked to in years. That's all of their like story, but yeah, that yeah, was a weird thing. Strange. Um, anyway. I hope I answered your questions though, for anyone who had questions. Um, like I said, I'm still gonna do tech related videos, but it's gonna be more in like sort of a 
how does tech contribute to my experience as a visually impaired person and enhance my lifestyle? You know, like how does it make my life more accessible? Uh, I don't really see myself doing like straightforward like tech reviews, unboxings, unless it like can contribute to another sort of narrative or, or, or spin or take, right? Like tech channels exist and there's like other tech accessibility related channels that exist and do great things, but that's not, that's not the box I want to put myself in or do. But again, technology is a big part of my life. So it's going to continuously like be a part of like the channel and the experience. It's just going to be like the play on how is this tech making my life more accessible? How's it assisting me or how, how is it not? Let's talk about that, you know? So I hope that makes sense. Uh, yeah, Samsung smartphones, they're good. I mean, they're fine. It's my biggest issue I've had though with them is just the lack of support and just really weird bugs that, especially in the first gen. And I, I know it's not fair to like <laughs> compare the Samsung Galaxy S Fascinate from like 2012, 2011 to like today, but it was a, it was weird. I had to get like a new device. Um, it was sending, just, uh, it was just odd. It was sending photos from my photo library to just random contacts. And like, I never want that to happen. You know, it's like you have personal images on your phone or silly memes or like family photos. Like it, you don't want that to be sent to some, you know, someone who's in your contacts, but it's still kind of a stranger strange i was getting like random messages from people like why did you send me this i'm like send you what and then i'll scroll up and it's like i never sent that but it happened too many times that's a whole other issue um but then my my galaxy s8 um yeah i think i'm just like i don't know iphones do it for me i do like android android's cool android accessibility has really improved a lot too over the years so uh, gotta go. Thank you for the love on the videos. Um, all good. Appreciate it. Hope you have a good one. Um, okay. Important question. So let me have my computer. Okay. <laughs> How am I? Um, I'm doing well. Thank you. Had orientation mobility earlier today. Got a new cane, a new white cane that's like heavy duty. So that's good. Um, still have my regular cane. It's it's fine. It's usable. It's just another backup one that's brand new. It's good to have. Uh, what else? What else? I rode some buses today to kind of get some practice with that. What else? I, I mean, I recorded a podcast. So it's been good. It's been a good time. Got this new toy. Got a new camera that I'm excited to sort of set up and start shooting with. Cause I, I got to film a new video tomorrow. So I'm hoping to maybe record it with this guy instead of the one that like I'm currently using, but you know, you may see me on at the moment, just the uh, Canon M50. And I might make a comparison video between these two cause they are very similar cameras in the sense that like they're, they're targeting similar audiences, but they offer different things. And then, so, um, and then Sana Sena, uh, are there any cameras that have built in screen readers as far as I know no I mean in terms of like camera cameras um, smartphones are probably the best bet and obviously you don't want your screen reader to like be heard in the video so it's like you can turn off the screen reader I know with voiceover you just do a little gesture and it turns off the voice so do that after you finish recording and then you can trim the video in an editor I think either default photos app clips for iphone imovie um if i was to like yeah smartphones are like the most accessible cameras right now and they might not be like the best looking they look fine they look good i think most people if you know how to like do composition if you know how to set it up if you have just good enough natural lighting if you like shoot by a window and have the window light coming in hitting your face uh no one's going to complain about the look of it, especially on YouTube. But yeah, hope that helps. Oh, the fascinating was horrific. Um, yeah, oh man, I don't even want to, I don't want to think about the Samsung fascinating. It was a nice looking phone. 
for the time especially it was the i think it had an ol oled display and in 2011 that was like it was four inches which was like that was a premium uh the iphone at the time only had a 3.5 inch display Thank you. Cool. I hope everyone else is doing well. Uh, what's the name of the camera? Uh, Sam, uh, Sony. Sony ZV-Z, as in Z, as some parts of the world say. Uh, the ZV-1. So V as in Victor. Z as in Zebra. So ZV-1. It's kind of the first of its kind. It's kind of based on Sony's RX... 100 series the rx series of cameras but it's sort of been put into its own category with a focus on video from a point and shoot not photography it can do photography and it can do really good photography if you like want it to but yeah of course yeah in fact yeah, um here also i'm just gonna put in the chat um just so people have the name of the camera the camera it's called Sony ZV-1. Just so it's there in the chat. You can copy and paste it. Whatever is easiest. Oh, cool. I appreciate you guys coming to hang out with me this hour. It's been fun this last hour. Um, I'm going to go get some dinner here, though. If you have any, like, lightning round questions. Anything I can answer real quick. Um, yeah, that's fine. It's appropriate. Uh Send it real quick. I also have a new video coming out later in the week, next week, with a new podcast with Juan Alcazar, awesome YouTuber, visual impaired um, content creator who also is a filmmaker. And so, if you also are looking for another visually impaired, sorry, visually impaired, I've been talking by the way a lot beyond this live stream. I've been talking with people with you know orientation mobility, and then I was on a podcast, and that was like two hours long. So. If I'm slurring my words, that is why. But uh, that aside, Juan Alcazar, brilliant YouTuber, uh, filmmaker who's visually impaired. If you're looking for that perspective as well, you know, beyond just my scope of things, uh, check out Juan. Uh, what's the handle thing you called? Yeah, so there's the vlogger kit. Um, so this is just, I think it's literally what it's called. I think it's just called vlogger kit not mistaken sony vlogger kit yeah it's literally what it's just called comes with a 64 gigabyte sd card which is nice you know doesn't hurt to have more sd cards with decent uh storage so hope you have a good evening i i hope you all have a wonderful day evening wherever it is wherever you are in the world um and look out again for if you're not following me on socials communicate when that podcast comes out it's not my podcast it's someone else's that I was on with two other wonderful youtubers and beyond that uh this new see different podcast is coming out yeah with with Juan Alcazar um, so that's going to be out next week and the video that I have coming out next week is uh it's iPhone related if you've been if you've been missing some iPhone related content iOS 15 um talking about that in next week's video so, uh, give some tidbits on some new accessibility. I'm a little late talking about it, but, like, I wanted the public release to come out first before I, like, kind of dive into it. One, so I'm, like, not promoting getting the developer build without paying for it, because you shouldn't do that. Uh, but, yeah. When did I get glasses? Uh, great question. These are not magnification glasses. So, these are simply just blue shield glasses. These are to protect from, like migraines and, and just blue light coming in um, i may make a video actually talking about kind of these but i think that would kind of group into like my work from home productivity kind of like how i'm productive how i stay disciplined and and on track with adhd and um some chronic pain from a athletic injury and then also having a visual impairment it's a video that i like i want to make and like how i've organized my studio my setup my office uh, to be, to maximize productivity. So, uh, but yeah, um, next week, 
new video and then see different show. Also, this is the latest see different shirt. It's on see different dot store. If you uh, want to check that out, I like it. It says see different on the back. Um, it's been a, yeah, it's, it's a good time. <laughs> Uh, best white cane attachment to use to roll. Um, ooh, see, that's like, I'm still exploring all the tips for the cane. I, I'm currently using a rolling one. Not like a ball, but like the, what do you call it? I don't know. It's it's a rolling tip, though. So, so I can like scan my cane, scan, scan the terrains. So. Hey, thank you. Appreciate the kind words, Danny. Thank you so much. Um. Uh, Eric, as a glasses wearer myself, I get a lot less into my eyes. Yeah. So again, these aren't magnification glasses. These are just blue shield. And I recommend, you know, if you benefit from most people, I think do benefit from eliminating the blue shield uh, or blue light from, from their technology and screen time. Uh, these have really helped me prolong a migraine from happening and, and keep me productive and actually like help me sleep better when I go to bed and get off the tech, get off the screens, all that. So, but, uh, thank you so much for all the kind words. Thank you for coming and chatting with me, spending the last hour. It's been, um, it's been a pleasure and, um, again, look forward to that new podcast. Looking forward to that new video next week. And, uh, I'm excited to update and share my next trip. So I'm going on a trip next week, uh, down, um, on the East coast a bit. So now I'll share more on social media, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, we'll do like a full on review of this camera, with some real world usage, the Sony ZV-1, uh, as well as talk about what it's like exploring a new city with a visual impairment, you know, in my own town or not in my own country. That's what I mean. Cool. All right. Thank you so much. You all have been awesome. Have a great day, evening, whatever it is in the world. Sing bye.